Uh, we are honored to have with us today Special Agent Jay Ratliff, who is the Special Agent in Charge and the Commander of ICAC and Human Trafficking Task Forces uh, for the state of New Mexico. Thank you so much for your service and for joining us today. So can you tell us more about ICAC, uh, the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force? Sure. So the, the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force is a coordinated nationwide effort of 61 individual task force across the country. So every state has at least one task force. Some of our larger states, think of California, Texas, have, have a couple. Um, that coordination effort is to investigate child sexual exploitation um, type cases, and primarily those ones that are you know, conducted on the internet. Um, here in New Mexico, um, our task force, uh, we are the, the head of the task force at the Attorney General's office. And then we have affiliate agencies that sign on as part of that task force group. Um, here in New Mexico, those, those uh, agencies are law enforcement agencies from state, county, local, uh, federal, and tribal agencies. And currently, we're about 92 affiliate agencies within our task force. Um, and that, that's all of us combined kind of working on the, on the same effort um, of investigating these types of crimes. And what inspired you to join the ICAC unit? And how has working with the ICAC uh, unit been for you? You know, for me, you know, the, I think the biggest thing for, for me initially joining this unit was, um, you know, the mission, you know, being able to save children, um, being able to have an intervention in, in some of the most horrific crimes that we can kind of think of, and saving some of our most vulnerable victims um, that we come across in law enforcement. Um, but in addition to that, I I'm, I'm, was really drawn into the technical side of these investigations. Um, and that's where a lot of my career was focused is on the technical side, um, being a certified computer forensic examiner and really digging in deep to these investigations that is, you know, has, has proven very rewarding um, and being able to do it. These are very difficult cases at times. And, and so it's challenging uh, at those times, but they're also very rewarding uh, cases when you have that opportunity to, to save some kids. And can you share with us some of the success stories of uh, the ICAC of New Mexico? Yeah, so, you know, you really think about a success story. I could give you tons of examples of, of children that we've saved, but and those are tremendous. But for me, I think the biggest success story here in the state is that coordinated effort um, amongst law enforcement of really being able to provide the citizens of New Mexico a, a better investigation um, based on the training and the coordinated effort between all of law enforcement, um, being able to bring that level of investigations across the state is just a huge success story. And how do you collaborate with agents and investigators nationally and internationally, given that the internet is global? You're right, um, and, and you're absolutely right. You know, these cases know no boundaries. They know no jurisdictional limits. Um, I think you know better than anybody, we can be talking to somebody in Europe um, instantaneously. So you're right, the internet has no boundaries. And I think that is really the beauty of this coordinated effort nationally. Um, we have the opportunity and it, it's awesome that we work um, with agencies such as the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Um, and then again, that coordinated effort nationally, um, I know that I can talk to my counterpart in you know, your state and I know that they've received the same type of training. We speak the same language when it comes to these investigations. And it's really um, the law enforcement component doesn't know any boundaries as well. Um, and then again, with those agencies that we work with, such as NICMIC, that has spread not only nationally, but globally. And we are able to connect to our counterparts uh, across the globe. Yeah. And what are some of the common scenarios um, that children and youth fall prey to? You know, I, I think the biggest thing that we see uh, with youth is that, uh, you know, you make a bad decision and something happens, right? So um, you, you think you're talking to somebody that you know, and it's not somebody you know, and you take a photo, a video, something along those lines. And unfortunately, then, you know, youth kids end up getting into that position where they feel vulnerable. Um, they're, they're being exploited and they, they feel like they can't they can't go to, to your parents um, because you're fearful of, of, you know, losing all of your electronics and losing, all, you know, all of your privileges, and you get into that situation where you feel very, very helpless. 
And I think that's a very recurring thing that we see a lot. Um, and obviously that's a big part of, of the task force as well is that outreach, that being able to connect and saying, hey, there is a place for you guys. Um, we all make bad choices at some point in our lives. There's a place and, and you'll be okay. Right. And with the pandemic and people spending more time online, are there any um, social media and or networking sites that are more dangerous than others? And how can we assess that? I think, you know, it, it's, um, it's hard to say that there's one that's more dangerous than another. Um, every application, whether you talk about social media or you talk about other computer programs, they all have legitimate uses. Um, but unfortunately, then there's the illegitimate um, uses that um, are predatory in nature. And so whether you talk about TikTok or you talk about Snapchat, all of those things kind of go through a trend. And so, uh, you know, back in my age, it was Facebook. Facebook was, a, and, you know, uh, the really popular thing. Now, with your age group, Facebook is not popular. We're talking about the gram and we're talking about Snapchat, TikTok, those kind of things. So that assessment is, uh, it's hard to say that there's one more dangerous than the other. Um, any, any application or any social media that allows that, that chatting and that exchange um, has the potential to do that. As far as assessment, um, it, it's a common sense approach, right? Um, so I don't know how many friends you have on your social media accounts, but I always ask, do you actually know every single one of those people? And most of the times that answer is no. So that common sense approach of, of really kind of um, assessing, just, just make sure you know who you're talking to. Right. And how can uh, we assist your efforts in saving children and help uh, helping catch criminals? I think the biggest thing that you can do is be an advocate, be an advocate for your peers, be an advocate for, you know, first off, hey, maybe you shouldn't be taking that, that photograph or sexting or those kind of things. Um, be an advocate for saying, hey, there's a better way. We don't need to do that. We don't need to send it. But then also be an advocate of, again, we all make mistakes. We all make bad decisions um, and find that advocating, hey, there is a safe place, report it. If you find that suspicious activity of like, and, and I'm sure you, you've been approached like, man, this just doesn't seem right, right? That common sense approach, report it. Um, help us out by reporting those things and being able to, to investigate it and take, take those individuals away from that platform. Thank you so much, uh, Special Agent Ratliff. You're welcome.